Uh, I don't care. You can do whatever you want. You I'll, can, do, I'll, I'll do it this time. You oh, do boy. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't mind it. It's the weirdest part, talking to a microphone. Yeah, it is. It's weirder that our microphone looks like an eyeball. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's weird. It reminds me of the Gorgonites from Small Soldiers. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay. All right. So <laughs> the, you're you're listening to a podcast right now. I think this is episode 11. It is, yeah. We couldn't figure out what uh, episode last time was. It was 10. And it was this, 10. That makes yeah. this one 11. This is 11. And you're listening to this, and we are going to talk about some things What today. is this, Connor? Oh, talking? this is the Invested Podcast. With? With Terry Cornella, yeah. who is right here. And then me. I'm Connor. You got it. Davidson. You hit all the beats. I did it. I hit all the beats. It's it was, it's tough <laughs> to do. Yeah, that eyeball is a really good listener, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's well. There's it's like the King's Speech. You know what I mean? <laughs> you always relate to the King's Speech. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that movie. We're gonna do a discussion on Pixar today. Mm-hmm. Like we said, we were going to. I'm sorry if my burps smell like meatballs. Oh, I can't smell. Okay, good. I can't smell anything. I burped and I feel like I can taste it, that's for sure. Uh, we're going to talk about Star Wars a couple times, starting off with some news. The news. If you want to hear some news. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me, tell uh, me. I don't know if you heard about this, but the Han Solo movie has an official name. Can you guess what it is? Oh, Solo, right? Solo. Yeah. Solo, calling a Star Wars story. I was really confused when that happened because I didn't know what that meant. Like, what? why did they call it Solo. Because his name is Han Solo. No, but I just was like, oh, that's a bad title. Why'd they call it that? <laughs> what title would you like to give it? Um, the oh, Han Solo Solo movie? I like that. That's my they, favorite one. They should call it Han 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 and Chewie's Adventures. Improv Adventures. <laughs> Improv Adventures. <laughs> Han and Chewie Improvised Adventures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd watch that. I know, yeah, I know. I feel like this is probably the hardest one to name. They just call it, what is it? Han's, a Star Wars story. Han Solo, the Star Wars story. So what are your thoughts on these <laughs> Star Wars stories, anyway? I don't think they're good. Well, there's <laughs> only been one. I don't think that one that one was good. <laughs> I think that the problem is that, like, Star Wars, like, the best Star Wars stories net right now are coming out of, like all the games and stuff, and like all, yeah. the, all the other properties, because they don't. They don't have apparently to. some really good comics. Yeah, yeah, all the that stuff I by haven't read. Kieran Gillen and all that stuff, the Vader arc for Marvel. That's yeah, all that stuff is really good. But it's like they don't. The movies are held to a certain standard of like we can't really fuck with continuity too much, so they don't really take any big. They don't do any weird stuff. And and I think because th- that's the thing about the prequels, right? Is they're like, we're not doing any of that, you know, Camino, those people with the long necks. No, <laughs> no, we're not doing that again. We don't. We want to be cool, Star Wars. Yeah. So we're gonna do little Yoda, but it's a lady, and we're gonna do. <laughs> Are you talking about Maz Kanata? Mesh Kanata. <laughs> She's the worst. <laughs> you don't like Maz Kanata? I like... It's so funny. I think... Who does the voice for... Can you look up Ma, Maz Kanata? Lapito Lapito. Lapito Nyong'o. That's her. She's great. Sorry, in I one just of my, butchered her name, didn't She's I? a great actor in one of my favorite movies. 12 Years a Slave. 12 Years a Slave movie I have watched. <laughs> haven't seen, don't want to see. It's... Oh, it's so good. There's parts of it that are just so fun. Yeah, but like, Dunkirk is good, so you don't even that's have That's true. It. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What if we did a deal? What if we did a trade? All right, you watch Dunkirk and I watch Children's right, a Slave? All right, yeah. All right, I'll let you good. know when Dunkirk is, like, out and, and able to watch in oh, good yeah. quality, and then we will... On the same night, too. Yeah. We we'll have to watch yeah. it on the same night. All right. How long is 12 Years a Slave? I feel like it's really long. It's two hours, maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it's good. It's, it's good. All right, man. I'll give it a go. It's good. Very good. I'll give it a go. All right. So anyway, okay. that's a zipper. Star that's Wars. Uh, so I'm sorry. Solo, a Star Wars story. <sighs> yeah. I, I guess it, it's like for some reason. I'm just not excited about this. It. Naming it has made it official, and now I'm all like, oh god, this is gonna happen. Yeah. Like, like I was before, kinda, it felt like something that w- could be negotiated with. Yeah, they could be like, ah, eh, never mind. Let's. Not it's like I know, I know everyone's gonna die, but you know, maybe we can choose how long we live. Medicine improves. You know, it's like one of those situations. <laughs> yeah. But, 
Han Solo movie. It's like there's no. There's no, no turning back, back now. They got the name written down. <laughs> Fuck! And they wrote down the name. Um, Those animals. So Shazam, the DC movie Shazam with The Rock's going to be playing Black Adam, yeah. right? Is that Black Adam? Again. So director has confirmed a 2019 release. Date. Who's the director for Shazam? <laughs> That's a good question. Let me look it up. I don't know. <laughs> um, but this They're is trying the, to sneak that one by me. The director's confirmed. It's like, oh yeah, but who you got though? Yeah, you always need to know. Oh god, <laughs> why is the director confirming release date? That's strange. Shazam 2019. Listen, it'll probably be out definitely. David by Sandberg. Next year. David Sandberg. All right. I don't. Oh, wait, is that the guy who did Lights Out? Yeah. No. He did Lights Out. What Annabelle the Creation. Heck? No. <laughs> is that a bad thing? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's it's like, what an interesting choice, right? Because you're like, ooh, a horror movie director doing a Shazam film. Interesting choice. But I got to say, all them horror movies he's done have been bad. So that's the part. <laughs> I don't like two. That's, part that's bad. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> Brian Johnson's only done like three movies, but they've all been great. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Um <laughs> But this is like and the, hey, I, I I give people the benefit of the doubt if they make great stuff. It's like yeah, you make a bad movie, but if you make some, if you make a great comic or a good story or a good yeah, maybe television it's just show, not their medium, no. you know, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like, and I think people can get better at that stuff. It's yeah. like, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a bad movie, but it was a fun TV show, and so you know, and then that guy went on to do Avengers, so and other things, yeah. But you have to you have to show good work. Yeah, no, I'm talking um, to you, David Samberg. But the Shazam it was it was like the DC movie that no one expected because they kept David talking Sandberg. about it and like. Did you see that Red Letter Media thing about David Samberg? No. Oh, it was so funny. It was them talking about the contest related to Annabelle Creation, where they would, because he got famous because he had a short film called Lights Out yeah. that was expanded into a feature like movie, which was not the best idea. Although that can be good because that's what, what Whiplash was. Yeah. But basically, it was like paying people $50 for their intellectual property in the hopes of turning it into a movie, and it was really fucked up and funny. <laughs> Thank you, Warner Brothers. <laughs> Thank you, Warner Brothers. You've done something. Um, Geostorm's opening weekend, <gasps> apparently... Oh, my God, Geostorm. ...won't even cover the cost of the reshoots they did for it. <gasps> no, how much was the budget for Geostorm? Let's look it up. Geostorm, no. You want it to succeed? Oh, of course. I love the Leonidas... From 300. Oh, I, yeah. So Gerard Butler, I, Gerard he's Butler. like one of my least. So Clive Owens? Budget $81 million. Yeah. Who, who directed this? Zack Snyder? <laughs> Dean Devlin. He's done like oh, all. I, he's done Dean all. The, he did Independence Day, Independence Day oh. Resurgent. He did Geostorm. He did Godzilla in 1998. Dean D. Dean D. Dean D. Oh, shit. <laughs> number one, I don't like <laughs> movies like this because it's just so predictable. Right. And it's just a it's typical disaster movie. And it just didn't look good. Pornography. I don't like Gerard Butler. You didn't like the 300 movie where he was like... No, I hate that movie. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Is that the one where he kicks the guy? Yeah. It's, it's like, this is madness. Madness. This this is... A sp- you are in Sparta now. Right? Is that the line? Yeah, that's, that's, the, the, that's the direct <laughs> quote. I'm pretty sure. I'm here now <laughs> in Sparta. You are also here in he Sparta. Sp- Gerard Butler talks out of the side of his mouth. Oh, yeah. he's. Oh, does he do that thing? Do you know that sometimes when people talk and they're kind of foam up at the sides of the mouth? <laughs> do you, know, you know what I'm talking he about? Might, he might do that, yeah. Gerard Butler might do That might be why I don't like him. I don't like him really in anything. I just like every he's time he's... He's got a very flemmy range. He's, he's just got a flemmy range. That's my... Vin Diesel. That's your Vin Diesel. Dang it. I never knew much about I never knew Sorry, man. Vin Diesel. He's just another whole other character. But I like Vin Diesel. He's right, just a, likeable. Gerard Butler I just don't like. And I didn't want this movie to succeed because it looks stupid. Geostorm. And well, it, I it, mean, apparently it took like three years to make. Or like three, <laughs> or three or four years. I'm not even kidding. I mean, listen. What's I not to like? I listened to a review. Geostorm. About Geostorm where apparently <laughs> Gerard Butler's beard changed his length <laughs> within scenes well, because of the reshoots. The trailer and makes color him look too. like he's in science prison. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's where they put scientists when they're too smart. you got to go to special science prison. Science prisons are different than regular prisons because they got the glass windows because we need to use your brain because you're a scientist. <laughs> Khan was in a science prison. Khan was in a science prison in Star Trek in the Darkness. You know what it is? It's where you've got the... You so know. was Loki in uh, Thor of the Dark World. Yes, science prisons. 
It's like, how are you going to get this information? But science is magic and you're changing What if I said they were the same thing? It's weird. It's like, Flora, well, you're not really an engineer. I don't know if you're the... I don't trust <laughs> I don't know you. if you're qualified for this. <laughs> it's like, it's weird. He's like, well, the Tesseract is energy. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's, how much does How much does you know? degree, sir? Because the first one, he's like... Just a stupid kid, and all of a oh, sudden yeah, yeah. He, it says all these things. You're like, how much do you actually know about this? Yeah, That's I think he's like one of those people that is like, like re- reads Ayn Rand at a young age, and is like, fuck yeah, objectivist. <laughs> do you think Gerard Butler <laughs> is a good choice to play? A, do you think he can pass as a scientist? Oh no, not in the least. No. That's a big reason why this movie's failing, I think. I don't even know if I'll see Well, because it. he does that thing where he's like, the population of the Earth is going to be attacked but by comets. But you got to suck out the side of your mouth. <laughs> you gotta, you know, we got to watch out for these comets, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Though, actually, I, I was curious about him. And you ever seen the movie, um, I don't know what it's called. It has uh, Christian Bale in it. It's about dragons in England in the modern day. Gerard Butler's in that movie, but that's movie actually a really dragons. good movie. I'll look it up. Movie with dragons. I feel like it's called The Age of F- Fire or something. Reign of Fire. Reign of Fire. Yeah, you ever seen this movie? Uh, this no. It's a great no. movie, actually. I, I heard this is a Star Wars reference in it. Yeah, him and um, Christian Bale, they, they act out an entire scene of Star Wars. Oh, okay. to a bunch of kids because it's like so. It's You're not a, the villains in that. Movie? No. So what it is? It's oh. like the movie is that it's it's a post apocalyptic <clears throat> world where dragons have taken over, mm-hmm. and they're like they have a, they're like held up in like an old castle in England, and they're like teaching kids like stuff, and it's it's actually a really cool concept. And I really like this movie. I, I feel like no one knew about it. I rented it from Blockbuster way back in the day. Matthew McConaughey's in it. Oh, Matthew McConaughey. I keep hunting dragons Someone's and they keep smashing something downstairs. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> what they're doing? That's my soul. All right, so what what do I have next? I'm sorry, I'm kind of. All right, so um, Ty Simpkins. Do you know who that is? No, but I knew somebody named Ty. That's great. Um, he I, he played Harley in the Iron Man three, the little kid. Okay. Yeah, he's reportedly <laughs> been added to the Avengers forecast. No. <laughs> Avengers four cast, not the forecast. Avengers not like not like a weather forecast. <laughs> forecast. We go stop these comets from coming in. Hey, <laughs> it's going to rain. <laughs> it's going to rain. Pretty much everywhere. It's going to be hot. It's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic video comic. It is a classic. good reference Thank there, you. buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's the kid from Iron Man three. Apparently, he's going to be in in uh, Avengers four. What do you think? I mean, he was pretty forgettable in. Avengers. I mean, I'm Iron Man. Jurassic theory. World. <laughs> Jurassic World. He was in Jurassic World. <laughs> he was in Jurassic World. <laughs> yeah, he's the younger one who cried about his parents getting divorced like a little <laughs> wimp. <laughs> he's like that guy from American Gods who is you talk to and you forget you talk to. He's just like that what? guy. There, there's a character in the book. There's he's, he's like one of the deities that they talk to and the, the characters never ever remember talking to him. I think he's supposed to be the personification of luck. So you think really? this that that kid's gonna play that character in Avengers Four? Uh, I just can't think oh, of a. Oh, that'd be great if he didn't. <laughs> that I, that I would be. I'm excited to give people second chances. Um, to do good acting. I I don't I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I can't figure out like. Yeah, why? If, if he's the same kid, no. If he's different, then yeah. The only way I'd be okay if him being the same character is if like. He was, I mean, again, that just goes to the point. The only way I'm okay with it is if he's totally different. Because if it's just the same thing where it's yeah. just, he's just like. Ta- like What's I the purpose? I don't yeah, understand. I don't understand. Being it's it. like, is, was it something with, when Tony Stark dies? He's like, yeah. He takes flowers to his grave and is like, I remember one time we had a conversation. <laughs> it's like, okay. He gave me a, why? Little, a little flashbang grenade. <laughs> you, gave a, you gave a weapon to a child. <laughs> You're a monster. No, he said it was harmless. I'm it just flashes. Dead. I'm glad Tony Stark's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, the Russos may be done with the MCU after Avengers 4. Okay. Yeah. I think that everybody should be done with the MCU <laughs> yeah. after Avengers 4. That's what I think. I think the Avengers... Although James Gunn apparently said that Phase 4 after... Or 5 oh. or 4 is like going to be completely different. Like yeah. new stories, new everything. But I, like, I, I don't mind James Gunn's thing. I feel like the Russos should go do something else. But James Gunn, I, if, if he wants to do one more... I think the Russo should do something completely original. Yeah, me too. I would too. like to see their like 
They're like their passion, passion project. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What yeah. could it possibly be? I feel like it would be a mix of like... It's about people who steal ideas in, from dreams. <laughs> I've been sitting well, no, I was actually, that's funny you said that. I actually think it would be a mix of, like, Shane Black and um, Christopher Nolan, like. Yeah, they're kind of in the That's kind of, like, what it would be yeah. for me. I don't know. They kind of meet that little, you know, that yeah. niche. I have one more, last little thing in news. Uh, so the X-Men Dark Phoenix. Fen- Fe- Phoenix. Dark Phoenix? <laughs> <laughs> the X-Men Dark Phoenix film. Well, yo, watch out for that Dark Phoenix coming will real soon. allow the X-Men world, the franchise, to Wait, flourish. I'm sorry, are you saying a Dark Phoenix film? Yeah, the Dark Phoenix film. It's the next X-Men movie with the new X-Men. Not the new mutants, but you know the new X-Men that were in... Uh, uh, the young ones. Yeah. Yeah, with Sansa Stark as, as what's her name? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's so it's going to be a Dark Phoenix. Phoenix. The next movie is going to be a Dark Phoenix, Phoenix movie. And apparently, this movie will help this version of the X Men world flourish. Okay, <laughs> All right. and, uh, I'm I'm confused because I'm like they did the Phoenix saga and it didn't end up going too well. No, for, so they're gonna do it again with new X Men. Do it again. We're gonna do it again with the same director. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna. Try. I'm gonna do it right this time. It's like, nah, man, you don't need to do that. I don't think it's the same director though, is it? Is it? Oh God, I hope not. Please, Let's no. See. I think that's Mr. Singer, Mr. Mr. Brian Singer, the you know, the most. Dark Phoenix movie, directed by Simon Kinberg. <laughs> He did X Men Apocalypse, which was bad. He did X Men Days of Future Past, or part most. Well, he was just a writer on those, right? Which is, you know, I not, assume not the greatest, but oh god, Deadpool. Simon, Simon, why? He did Logan? He didn't direct Logan. No, he just wrote a lot of these these puppies. Yeah, he just wrote these, so he's gonna direct this one. But even then, I'm like, come on, man, you gotta you gotta mix it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, is this, is this something he's writing and directing? Is there a new writer for this one? I don't know. Let's check. That's not. That's your face. Get out of here. That's your face. Uh, director Simon Bilbada doesn't say. I mean, yeah, they probably just have him write it, but. <laughs> but yeah, it's just Kin Kinberg. He's done so many. He's written so many things that didn't turn out yeah. well, and so I have to believe that. It, it's either he's the common denominator or. It's the directors. And so if this is his first, you know, director, or not even his first, but if this is a directorial debut that allows his vision to shine through, then I'm excited. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, I guess. I don't care about this franchise anymore. I think it's just they need to stop for a while. Yeah. That's what I think. I just think Noah Hawley should be put in charge of everything because Legion is just so good. We're going to move on. We're gonna talk about trailers. We're gonna do uh, just we just one trailer. Um, what was it again? Uh, oh, Battlefront Two. Trailer, trailer. So we talked about Battlefront Two a while ago about the beta and how much I did enjoy it. There were flaws with it. I have to admit. Um, the I don't know if you heard about the loot crate system. Did you say loot crate? Loot, loot crate. Loot crate. Okay. How like the only way to progress <laughs> is through loot crates. And yeah, Luke Skywalker. It's basically it basically turned it into pay to win. Like <laughs> you gotta open up this box real quick. You have to buy these crates in order to progress. And so, like, if you have a lot of money, you can just buy all the good ones. You know what I mean? So it was like DLC microtransactions. Yeah, microtransactions. But oh, EA hell. has has announced that it's not going to be that integral. They're gonna they're gonna debuff them. They're gonna be like, you can't get all the good stuff by just buying them. You have to actually play the game. <laughs> So there's all that going on. Nice. Good job. But, Coming so that flash. half of it is a little bit of a mess. I, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to try it and, jo- and probably enjoy it, because I'm, I'm not that much of a doubt. But the story mode campaign. Benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt. Doubt of the benefit? I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Da- I don't really know what that saying doubt means, to be honest with <laughs> I was, no, I think benefit of the doubt. That is correct. For some reason, I was like, it just sounds doubt weird. of the benefit. Yeah, um, but the the new trailer, the trailer, the final trailer for the for the for the story mode campaign mm-hmm. has come out. We watched it. What did you think? I really liked it. I thought it was better than most movie trailers I've seen. <laughs> so, do you like fun. the idea? I know a lot of people are like. There are a couple people out there who mm-hmm. are like in the Twitter sphere, kind of meh about it. They're not too happy that. It, I'm happy that it's canon. It's officially announced. This actually yeah. happened. I mean, that's fine. Do you think that's so? Do you think that's fair to have a franchise that's a movie, mm-hmm. 
and then be like, oh, this stuff happens in the video game that is that actually happened in the universe. Not everybody plays the video game. Yeah, that's fine. You think that's fine? Yeah. Yeah. It's cross-platform to- storytelling. Is- yeah. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I agree. Um, so it's very exciting to. So we're basically going to find out what happens between the thirty year span between the Death Star two blowing up and mm-hmm. at the end of Episode six, nice. and what happens in the beginning. That's the part I've been most intrigued about for yeah. Ever and since this I've is, heard I guess, this is the way they're going to figure it out. EA was like, "We're going to write this game." Or it's not even EA; it's some other. It, they wrote a, a video game. Is it Dees? It's not. It's I think it's um. I think it's who wrote the story mode. I mean, um, Dees, right? It's yeah, Dees. Dice. <laughs> well, in French, I believe it's pronounced Dees. <laughs> I could be completely wrong about that. Dees. <laughs> so, um, I'm looking it up here. So, you ever heard of Spec Ops The Line? <clears throat> it's another video game. Yeah. That was like apparently super controversial. It's super intense. It's really compelling mm-hmm. storytelling. They wrote the campaign to this. The story. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, the same people, same company. Uh, Shit. Um, the same studio. So they were like, we have this idea to, to put this game mm. in the span of those 30 years. Right. And then they asked Disney and Lucasfilms or whatever, LucasArts, they were like, can this count? And so they, they read it themselves. They gave a few notes. They're like, right. here are where all those characters would be. They're Hell basing yeah. it off a lot of different books. Mm. Um, there's a part where you see Leia, <laughs> and she's wearing a certain outfit that she wears in one of the books that's canon, apparently, or comic books or something. Like Oh, the EU? Or the new stuff? Uh, the newer stuff, where she's in Naboo or something like that. There's a really funny line in Dark Gently where one of the characters says, What is this new shit? And now that's what I feel whenever I thought you were just going to pull on the front of the Ben show where you're just like... <laughs> You know where, like, there's a whole of the universe of dark matter oh. that we're living in? Oh, God. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I love that moment. That's what's such a good moment. And it just, like, lingers on his face for a while. I can't, I can't believe I'm going to be in the cover of GQ. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. I love that show. We'll have to talk about that one, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, anyway, um, so then Lucasfilms gave their notes, mm-hmm. and then this company was like, cool. Can it be canon? They're like, yeah. So this is legit. They're like, this is what happened between that thirty-year span. I think it's going to explain how the first order got to power and all Hot that dog. stuff. Hot dog. Hot dog. So I'm really I'm so excited, excited to play this. Yeah. It's it's said to be about an eight to ten hour campaign. That's nice. That's a quick play. I mean, if you take your time, it's probably about twelve. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's basically an eight to ten hour movie. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's not just like your typical Battlefront two. Like the campaign of Battle for the original Battlefront two mm-hmm. was that was the story of the five hundred first. Remember right. them, and it was just like you place you in big maps and you fight a big war. There's no really. St- this is like actual level walking Characters. through levels, character driven. There's some levels where you really have to be really <laughs> sneaky. There's some levels where you have to like sneaky be levels? really loud. I, I love the sneaky levels. Sneaky levels, levels man. <laughs> so she has a little droid on her back that flies around and can shock Remember people. Remember Tom Clancy's sneaky levels. <laughs> Yeah, that was the name of the game, Tom Clancy Sneaky Level. Sneaky Level. And based off the book series, Tom Clancy Sneaky Guy. <laughs> oh, what? I like that you could play co op. <laughs> you ever do that? Yeah. And Splinter Cell Co op. Oh, man. Yeah, I made my sister do that, and she was like, I, why, why does he have a gun? Why is he killing people? I really liked every time you put on the the, the 3D thing. Or, you or that, people. The, um, <laughs> yeah, you can hold, yeah. But every time you put on the. The night vision go mm-hmm. bing, make that sound. Okay. It's just really satisfying. That's a good game, actually. It's a good game. So anyway, this trailer looks really good. There's a bunch of faces in it. You get to see you see Luke, mm-hmm. as we know he was going to be in it. Leia's in it. Maz Kanata, apparently. You go to her place. Maz Kanata. So I wonder what she could possibly have to do with anything. Um, <laughs> That's what they said when they put her in the movie. What does she have to do with anything? And they're like, know. listen, we need to put... Some fucking Yoda in here. Now, what's really fascinating... <laughs> we need to sell toys. <laughs> we need to sell Moscanata toys. We need to sell those... What do you call Squibbles. it? Squibbles. We need to sell I know exactly porgs. What you're the porgs, yeah. We need to sell the porgs. We need to, we need to sell toys of Ice Foxes and Captain Phasma. <laughs> those, those are the big four. Those Catch Phasma, Moscanata, porgs, Ice Fox. Done. <laughs> Millennium Falcon Legos. <laughs> My family can eat for another year. <laughs> um, what's really fascinating is that there people are talking about it. It hasn't been confirmed or, you know, anything like that. But that you're going to see Kylo Ren or Ben Solo before he was Kylo Ren. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that's fine. But then again, I don't know if Lucasfilm's going to want that because you're supposed to, like... 
Oh, in the game. In the game. For some reason, I thought you were talking about the movie. No, I'm talking about the I game. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Flashback, yeah. right? No, in the game. Oh, in the game. Which is weird. Which seems weird because I don't know if Lucas is <laughs> voiced by <laughs> Adam Driver. That's I don't even know. Actually, he might be. <laughs> he's like five years old, but he's got the deep Adam Driver voice. <laughs> he's I like, don't know. Hey, I don't want to do. Can I go to the store? Oh, I, oh, I, I feel like it does that a lot. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sark. <laughs> so anyway, that's the trailer looks good. Calvin was probably not a f- happy little kid. He was probably wasn't ben a happy Solo? camper. Because yeah. his father was a crazy man, and his mom was probably always busy doing. Oh, that. he had bad parents. He had bad parents. That'll do it. Yeah. Watch out, parents. Watch out, your kid's going to kill you. <laughs> it's going to kill everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's talk about like seeing like the, the formation of the Knights of Ren in this game, mm. things like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm the most intrigued by them. I want to know about all their little shapes and sizes. I'm hoping we see more of that in The Last Jedi. It's weird that they weren't like hanging out with Kylo Ren because I'm like... Yeah, did they die? Yeah. He must have killed them all because like, no. he's the only one who has a lightsaber. Oh no! Did they all have lightsabers? Oh, in that picture, uh, that like quick flashback, mm-hmm. he's the only one with a lightsaber, and they're all just kind of maybe they staffs. share it. Maybe they're like, "Hey, come on, man, <laughs> give me the lightsaber." He's like, "Come oh. on, you you didn't even build it right. It's stupid. It's good. <laughs> stupid. How am I supposed to hold the handle?" <laughs> all right, we're gonna talk about. We're gonna move. Although on. no, hey. the guard makes sense, right? Yeah, the, I guess so. so that is, that is, I think that that's to stop people from getting their hands cut off. Like they're like, too many people have lost hands to lightsabers. We need. A little yeah, I agree. I really, what I really like about that is that, like, at first I was like, "What a waste of time! Why would he need that?" But then, yeah. in, and then in um in the Force Awakens, he's holding it against Finn, it's and like he actual, twists it a little yeah. bit, and he like kind of stabs him with it. It's a great moment. Yeah, like it, it actually does serve a purpose because at first you're like, like you have three thoughts. You're, you're like, "Ooh, that's a cool visual," and then you think about it, and you're like, well, "Why would you build that?" And it, then it actually does have. a purpose. I also like, thought okay. about are like medieval knights like a thing in this universe. Like uh-huh. swords like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So are there like different kinds of lightsabers? Like, are there like curved ones? Are there like, yeah, like like trident ones? Yeah, that, that's interesting. I mean, we know there's the Darth Maul. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about like a staff and then has like three little things and like three right. lightsaber things pop out of it. I don't know if we've ever seen a lightsaber that was other than a sh- like a straight? straight. Yeah, there's been no curved yeah. ones. There's that one in, um, I think it's Star Wars Rebels or it's Clone Wars. I don't know which one. Where it's like a handle, it has a circle, and it's double ended, and then it spins oh, on the handle. That's interesting. So like they can hold it like General Grievous style. It's just kind of <laughs> so I have no idea. God knows. Anyway, I'm very excited for this this trailer. I was happy with the trailer. I'm happy with the characters. It's fun. It looks good. It, it's so funny. I was when I was watching the trailer, I was like, "This is better than a lot of tr- movie trailers." Yeah, absolutely. That I've seen, and I think just because really it's kind of interesting, and there's like, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of you're just kind of intrigued with it. Kind of intrigued. I'm like, oh, are you gonna play it? You don't have a way of playing it, too. I know. I don't. I'm not in the PS4 crew right now. Not so yet. I'm a generation behind. Get with the times. Get with the times. I'm waiting. I'm waiting till uh, what do you call it? Either Spider Man or Kingdom Hearts two. Or Last of Us two. And then I'll have to get it. Yeah, Spider Man. You're gonna have to get it for Spider Man. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a big one. I don't still don't know when it comes up, but we'll do a yeah. review on the it. The problem with me is, is there just wasn't a lot of games out for it. Like or stuff there I is now. I don't really care about. Horizon no. Zero Dawn, one of the best games I've ever played. Oh, that's true. Okay. Like like honestly. One of I'm, the best games hey, I've I'm ever played. I'm over here. I'm 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 I take so long to like get around to playing games. I'm I'm still I'm trying to play Luigi's Mansion over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which version? I I'm, I'm just I'm trying to play the first version. I mean, I could I could technically play the second cuz I do have a 3DS, 3DS. But I don't I want to I want to do it right. I want to do it up right. <laughs> I want to play the first one first if I can. So Connor, my good friend, you wanted Luigi's to talk Mansion. about Pixar movies. Yeah. Let's talk about Pixar. Yeah. All right, what do you want? What do you want to start with? Uh, let's bring up that list. Oh, let's talk about. Can we bring it up by date? Can we bring yeah, it up let's by do date? it. All right, so I'm gonna do. We'll see. We'll see what what happens. I really want you to watch Mr. Robot. <laughs> oh, we'll get there eventually. Because there was a really good episode recently, and Dirk Gently, and Legion, and Westworld. You watch those four, and like, dude, All right. you're gonna be. Number one is Toy Story. Hyped. Hyped. Uh, number one the is Toy Story. Toy Story. November twenty second, nineteen ninety five. Yeah. Ooh. Joss Whedon wrote the screenplay. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he helped. 
Yeah. What? He used to be a script doctor back in the day. I had no idea. Yeah. So, real quick, mm-hmm. when you have a director of an animated film, mm-hmm. how does that work? Well, somebody's got to draw the pictures, I guess. Well, I mean, they're it's kind of like a video game, right? Where there there's individual animators, but they're the one who's kind of the overall director, overall kind overseeing of a, everything and shit. Yeah, I guess so. All right, so mm. Toy Story. Toy Story. What do you got? <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> um, Toy Story is a Pixar film. Do you think it's their best Pixar film? Uh, I mean, off the top of my head, I think it's it's definitely one of the top three. Yeah, I agree. Just because it... I hate Woody in that movie. Yeah, the, I, I think I that's abso- the point. I absolutely hate him. I don't like him in any I, I aspect. Think that is totally on purpose. Is he's, and when uh, I see Andy playing character. with him, I'm like, Andy, you know you're playing with like a huge ass. <laughs> <laughs> he's a real, he's like, a real dick. He's a real dick. I, um, I, they're all mean in that, actually. I will, but a Buzz is kind of nice. Buzz is nice. No, I'm talking about the original toys. Mm-hmm. Like they're all so quick to dismiss uh, Woody oh, and stuff like Woody. that. Yeah, like they literally yeah. kick him out, and they're just like, "Yeah, we don't want you anymore." Bye. Oh yeah, when they think he's killed Buzz. Yeah, yeah. all that stuff is great. It's weird. It's like, not even that. Flies. Like even when Buzz first shows up, they're like, Psh, "Woody, you don't have all that cool tech, you idiot." Oh yeah, yeah he's not... so mean. Yeah, he's, he's, I see uh... why he's so grumpy. There, <laughs> he's around such like jerks. They're all just not a very healthy community at all, dude. That's true. That's true. It's I very mean, weird as an adult going and watching it. It's like, what are we like? Oof. Well, it's it's that question of like, if you meet the one of the most terrifying questions of all is like, if you keep meeting assholes all day, they're like, then you're the asshole, and it's <laughs> like. Oh, how true is that? That's fucked up. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point, yeah. Because <laughs> somebody could just have really bad luck. Um, do you think... So who's the villain in the first Toy Story? Is it Sid, technically? Technically it's Sid. I think that... I think the villain changes. Because from Woody's perspective, the villain is Buzz, right? Because he's the he's getting in the way of Woody's and Andy's relationship. Yeah, yeah. But then it transforms to Sid... I think there's a villain in the middle between Buzz and Sid. I forget who it is. See, to me, I don't but even... it's like a dog or Pizza Planet or something in between. It's their, it's their struggle to get back. Yeah. To... Oh, like, holy shit, like, all that stuff with the Pizza Planet stuff was horrifying. Like, yeah. all that stuff when they're in the real world. It's... Yeah, everything's so big. Yeah, it's like... That's like, I've never... Like, like the they, made, they made... They uh, made... Was it Pizza World or what? A pizza Planet pizza World? Pizza Planet, yeah. The, the whole world. Like, yeah, it's like unappealing. I don't want to go there. I, I want to go there because I like the Star Star Wars aesthetic. The Star aesthetic. Yeah, that's yeah, I, well. I mean, now, but like as a kid, like it was a scary place. It was scary, yeah. They made it a really scary place. It's pretty smart. And Sid's house. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. You can smell it. You can smell <laughs> the stale cigarettes. You know what I mean? Like just like really nasty. The backyard and all that stuff at this point. It's so scary. No, I don't think Sid's a bad kid. I don't think he's a bad guy either. I just think, like that movie makes him seem like he's supposed to be the villain. Mm-hmm. But he was just a kid being a kid. I used to leave my toys... Well, he's not really a kid. He's like a preteen, right? I guess so. I don't know how old he's supposed to be. Well, it just it seemed like he wasn't a, like a kid playing with toys. If, so it felt like he was a preteen who was kind of... St- st- you know, his de- his development was kind of hindered a little he bit. He had quite an imagination, though, because he acted yeah. like they were real, and he was torturing them. People who wear skull t-shirts are very strange. I guess so, yeah. Oh, you're wearing one right now. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this one's great, and the ending with the truck scene's great. I just, I really oh, like yeah, it. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, it's very, I mean, it's got rules. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons I like it so much is, is that it's very, you know, because of the animation, since you can kind of do whatever you want, it's easy to go crazy time real quick. Yeah. And so the fact that they were able to have it be character motivated and for it to have a basis in a system of emotional logic is, you know, I think is one of the major reasons for its success. I have to say, though, sorry, um, I was reading names. Um, I have to oh, say horrifying shit in that movie, if, for sure. if you go back and watch it now, though, and if you've seen it enough, you can pay attention to details in the background and like the animation is pretty outdated. Oh really? For, yeah. For Toy Story? Yeah. No, I. I, I know. I that think... scene. I mean, I just. I was curious. So that scene with, with the with the, it's not horrible. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it's like really bad. But that scene with the van when they're tr- trying to get the, to the truck. If you look at the houses surrounding, like, mm-hmm. 
they look pretty pretty bland, and it doesn't like the the d- draw distance doesn't go very far. It's kind of like that's interesting. You can be like Why are they, you moving? can be like yeah, you can be like that was in a computer. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just seems it's just kind of interesting to look back at. Yeah, that movie had a lot of fun reversals and moments and stakes. Like there's a lot of cool scenes in that. I I I think that movie is like has a lot of fun scenes overall. Yeah. Like it's it's and they're all based off the it's like a crazy situation but they're all based off something real. You know what I mean? There's always a logic yeah. to every how everything works and and there's a consistency to the way information is revealed and like it's yeah, it's just weird. It's very it's very measured. Like they 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 feel like patient. They took their time with it. Every sequence has a purpose. It's just like overall really well made film. No, oh, it's it's great. It was it was a great start too. Um, I think a bug's and life. and then a bug's life threw it all away. No, okay, <laughs> I like a bug's. Life. I think bug's a bug's life is one of my favorites. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's really good. I think it's super underrated. It is underrated. That opening yeah. scene where they're all in line and the leaf falls and they're like, "What do we do?" <laughs> it's yeah. great. It's so good. Yeah, that's great stuff. Yeah, the music's wicked good. Everything. Yeah, I well, love a bug's. I life. feel like the metaphor in Bug's Life was more. Apparent, although I I couldn't say overthrow what it was. your government. Overthrow your government. <laughs> well, there's a Roman element, right? Yeah, is there, there's yeah. something to that effect. I, yeah, I think so. Where Hopper was like Hopper's a great villain, an, imp- an imperialist. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> He's so good. He's like he was a f- scary villain. I don't know he, like, if you're, how much you've read of The Walking Dead or seen. He's basically Negan. <laughs> I know who that where he's like is. you work for me. <laughs> Everything you get, get is mine. So he's like a, and I'll let you live. a fascist. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> and she's Hopper's some, fantastic. Some I think Hopper's a fantastic. If you go back, as an, like I said, as an adult, go back and watch it. You're like, mm-hmm. wow, this guy's crazy. Yeah. 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 Oh, and, and I like when they make the bird and the bird lights on fire. That's the best. <laughs> you ever play the video game? Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, it was like terrible. It was ago. terrifyingly horrible and, like, hard. Like, it wasn't horrible. It was just so hard. Mm-hmm. The birds. I don't think I ever beat it. I think we got stuck in the bird level. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I didn't get far. You had to fight Hopper's henchman, like the fat guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I think your only attack is throwing seed. <laughs> oh god, wasn't there a time where a character like got cut in half, or in that movie, like or something, or one of the characters got something cut off their face, or is there some weird shit? Some Someone weird... loses an antenna. Okay, yeah. There's some body horror in. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Which you, you're not a huge fan of. <laughs> I mean, if it's bugs, I'm fine. <laughs> it's bugs, I'm fine. It's the human element that <laughs> kind of creeps me out of it. <laughs> no, I think I think this one's great. I love mm. Bugs Life. I think it's um, I think it's under, underrated. A lot of people didn't like it. Mm. Well, what is so if the metaphor of Bugs Life is about the like an authoritarian agricultural society, what is the metaphor of Toy Story? Is it is it about... Because it seems like they're both society metaphors. One is... Yeah, like the Toy Story is like accept. Is about... Well, is there something about the past and the future? In like, Toy Story? Yeah, because Woody's cowboy buzz is, represents the new world. Yeah, like in, let the new world in or something yeah. like that. Like coexist. The, the, that's, it's funny. I, we learned about that in our um, U.S. foreign policy class. Is like There are six themes to early American history up to the Civil War. And one of them is the idea... Of in the founding of America, going from the old European style yeah. to the new world. So you always have this idea of them, like uh, even like Thomas Paine talks about why the European system doesn't work as far yeah. as politically because Europe is too thickly planted with monarchies, and that all their and that even getting involved in foreign wars with monarchies is a bad idea because they're just going to keep perpetuating the same conflicts, like the Hundred Years' War and all that stuff. I think they had this conversation when they were writing Toy Story. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> what, all right, so Toy Story 3 is next, November 24th, No, Toy Story 2. Toy Story, did I say 2? <laughs> like, Toy Story 3, I was like, you just <laughs> you skipped all the way to the end. Toy Story 2 is next. Yeah. Uh, that, Toy Story 2, I think is very underrated. You think so? Yes. I like it. Yeah, Super it's pretty good. Underrated. Because um, that's, to me, the ultimate... Like, it has all my favorite things. It's got Zergs in it. Yeah, Zerg was a lot of fun. They, they like... They're, they're very heavily on, like, the Star Wars references in that movie. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like, it begins, basically, as being Star Wars. Like, yeah. with that, uh, with the video game yeah. opening. Yeah. Yeah, that's some good I stuff. I really stuff. love that scene. And all the stuff in the supermarket and, like, the weird metaphor about commerce that's happening. With all the Barbies? With all the Barbies and all that stuff. Oh, what, yeah, like, the rows of... What I love, though, is I love the villain, the... What is it? Stinky Peter or something like that? Uh, uh, 
played by Kelsey Grammer. Yeah, he was great. That was awesome. I can't remember the guy's name, but yeah, no, he was, was like, oh, the, he was like the the the, the, the doppelheimer. Yeah, the, the, the foreman. Oh gosh, I, he, he his name was like. That was awesome. He was like the the, the, the one of the best. Up. Yeah, right. And like, it was so weird because there was the story, and then there's the toy based off the story, and the the toy was a had its own narrative life outside of the story, and so it's like. This the, the the toy antagonist also was able to transform his perception of himself out, outside of the story. He was able to take control of his narrative frame. And it's so funny Stinky, again. His name was Stinky Pete. Stinky, I think so, right? Yeah, but didn't he have like a different? And they called him something else, didn't they? Like Pete, <laughs> probably Pete or something, or Pa, Grandpa. No, he had a different name. Hang on, I gotta find it now. But yeah, it's just like, and th- that's the best part is he was the closest counter to Woody. Ever like all of all of Woody's baggage of like I don't want anything to change, I just want to stay the best and stay you know st- stay in people's good graces. All of that kind of like ugly baggage that Woody has, he perfectly encapsulates the logical extension of that. Like, what if you kept doing that forever? And and that's and he to to I think to like almost a homicidal level is he's the extension of that metaphor. Yeah, and it's so interesting, so cool. The prospector. Prospector. Also known as a prospector. Prospector. That's how I know him. No, I know. That's I great. And again, it's that commerce thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I... <laughs> again. Um, I really like that scene where the guy comes and fixes Woody, and it's the same mm-hmm. guy who plays chess in the chess oh, board. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little things That's like crazy. that. It's really fun. Um, yeah, I think story, Toy Story 2 is good. I don't I don't know if I like it more than the first one. Mm. I think I like the first one a little bit more. For, yeah, first one has more classic scenes, I think. Mm. I think I just like the thematic material of the second movie a little bit. I find it a little bit more relatable. Do you like Mrs. Potato Head? Oh, she's in the second one, right? Yeah. Don't forget to pack your crazy eyes. He has the crazy eyes. eyes. Yeah, I, th- I like that joke, kind of. <laughs> I, I think that the potato family is is uh, horrifying. Just the idea of, like... like I know it's supposed to be a silly kid's thing of, like, he changes his face all the time, but it's like, it's like he... He forms his own identity, identity, by his face, and the the idea of change. Like I know people are like oh shape shifting. That's kind of a fun idea, but it's like, like he his sense of self. I feel is kind of all over the place. You know, as much as he yeah. kind of it portrays kind of a gruff, like hey, I'm Mr. I'm walking here, Mr. Potato Head. I'm walking here. But you know, I, I I just think I've always I out of all the toys there, I always identified with the. Uh, the dinosaur was really great. Like I like the Slinky Dog. Oh, the Slinky, yes, Slinky's the Slinky Dog. Awesome, yeah. The Slinky Dog was great. I loved. I mean, I love the aliens too. The clown, <laughs> yeah, like all that yeah, stuff yeah, is yeah, great. The claw, yeah. Like they're, I was like, oh, I love their when, when they get chosen. <laughs> like <laughs> the light, yeah, I know. <laughs> like it's so that's like good. that's their society. That's all they know. It's awesome. It's so perfect. Yeah, and they're so excited to like to, to engage in this ritual sacrifice. <laughs> so they know nothing. Else. They don't know anything else. Oh God! Whoa, that metaphor is very <laughs> yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty impressive. Uh, <laughs> next was Monster Inc. I think Monster Inc. is a fantastic. Yeah, story. Monster Inc. is great. Yeah, it's it's really well done. It's a classic. Yeah, the, my, the best part is. The golden rat. <laughs> what? Which which part? Remember when he was my was asking spelling the wrong paperwork and and Roz is like, no, it's the golden rat. <laughs> oh yeah, she's great. Yeah, yeah, I love all that stuff. Although I, part of me has a problem with the idea of like, like Boo and and Sully like having to take care of a child. Like, I don't know. I mean, I, I get... I, I understand that... I think I read somewhere, too, that the idea behind that movie was the idea of being a new parent and how scary that was. Yeah. So it's like the metaphor is flipped of the idea of these scary creatures having to take care of a child. And I think that it's like... the I, <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with Boo, but I just, like... There's something about it that's very strange to me. Is like... Especially the, how the idea of how time works at the end. And then... He goes back and he visits her, but she's like older now. Well, you don't know she's old. You don't see her. It's we, right. Yeah, that's true. You just hear her say "kitty" and that's it. Yeah, 
It's very str- it's very strange. Like I I don't know. There's an element to it that's too. What if you heard a do- dude's voice? He's like, "Kitty." <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I'd be like, "Wow, this is different." <laughs> this is different. Uh, did you ever see Mike's new car? Mike's new the car. The short film. I uh, know. I don't think so. Oh, that's a great. I'll show that to you eventually. It's great. Yeah, and Mike Mazowski. It's a new car. That's it. He's the best character. He's, he's awesome. great. He's like he's so good. And he's he's uh, jealous, right? Yeah. You like yeah. you're supposed to hate him, but he's all like Woody. Yeah. Where he's where he more doesn't want anything to change, else. but you like him though. I yeah. really like him. Yeah. He's very literally the green, one-eyed monster of jealousy. Right? Is that what's called? I have no idea. I have never heard of that. You never call it the the metaphor of jealousy is like a green monster or like the green one-eyed monster. No. Yeah. What did you think of Randall? Randall? Oh, my God. Randall's one of the best villains ever. Yeah, Steve fan- Buscemi's amazing. He's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so no. good. I love that it's Steve Buscemi and um, John Goodman, though. Yeah. Oh, well, they were in something together, yeah, right? Yeah, they were in... Um, what's it called? Big Lebowski. Yes. Yeah, like oh a classic pairing. I never made that connection. <laughs> yeah. Wait, when was this? This uh, uh, 2001. 2001. So that was after Lebowski. Mm-hmm. Like, that came mm-hmm. out in the 90s. Wow. It's great. I love it. That's fucking insane. I never made that connection. That's <laughs> yeah, awesome. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah, Randall's fan- Randall's wicked yeah. good in that movie. And the finale is awesome. Like all the doors and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going through cool. everything. Yeah. The, the slide the, when they go to Japan and they can't open the door, it's like it's a slide, slide it. <laughs> slide yeah. it open. That was great. Yeah, yeah, everything's so good. That's um, a, that's a problem too. Is like I don't feel like enough movie finales do that. Where it's like you set something up in the first act, you set up the rule of the film, right? That these people can go through these doors, and then you execute it, to it, a level that's insane. It even sets up the question like you're you're wondering if you think about it, like watching the movie, like what would happen if they just kind of like jump through a bunch of doors? You know yeah. what I mean? Like where all these doors go? Exactly. And then you find out. Yeah. Yeah, it's really satisfying. Yeah, very yeah. Well, very good. Who is the director of that one? Is that Peter Docker? Pete, doctor. Pete Doctor. Nice Pete good doctor. job, Pete. Fucking pretty. Mr. Doctor. Mr. Doctor. <laughs> doctor, Doctor. Doctor Tell. Oh, yes. that would, Dude. He can't get a doctor now. Uh, so up next was Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. I love Finding Nemo. A lot of people like that movie. I have problems with that movie. You have your problems with I don't think it's bad. No. I just think there's elements to it that I don't necessarily, I'm not 100% in love with. You know? Like what? Oh, man. Like um, what, Connor? <laughs> like what, right? Well, I just feel that... It's a perfect movie. I feel that, like... The joke kind of, it doesn't, not that it gets old, but it's just the Marlin and uh, Do- Dora, right? Dory. Dory. Their relationship is very strange to me because it feels like it's making her the joke over and over again. And I know in the sequel there's all this stuff about her family and like all this backstory, but it's like that wasn't there in the first movie. <laughs> and it yeah, just right. felt like they were, she was like constantly, they were constantly making fun of her. Um... And and not even in like a vicious way, but it just felt like they kept going back to that. And Marlon's kind of a jerk. Yeah, and Marlon, I was like, not a very likable character because it's like it's I don't I didn't understand his whole thing where he was like scared, so he never let his son do anything, and and now this is supposed to be him doing what he's afraid of, sort of. And and I don't know, it's just like he's supposed to be overcoming his fear. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that they commun- – like, it wasn't communicated in the way I want to. Like, I never saw a moment where where Marlon, like, he, he, he his bravery went and won out. You know, it's like you didn't really see him change. You just saw him go get well, a son well, there's and a point, go back. There's a point at the end where, like he's, like, he's like, no, you can't do these things on your own. And at the end when they get caught in the net, mm-hmm. his dad's like, you have, you have to trust me, Dad. And he's like, okay, I trust you. And then they get out. Right. But yeah. that part of me is like... That net, that's my problem with the movie. Is like, like said, I felt that like net scene <laughs> didn't feel like the climax of the movie. Like, it didn't... Yeah, yeah. It felt really, like, forced. The like, best part of that movie is when they're with the turtles. That's my favorite part. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, but that's it. I like the sharks, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, the sharks is good. There's a lot of good, really yeah. good... I, I really do like this movie. I think that it got too popular, so now yeah, you're kind of like, eh, about it. It's way too popular. Yeah, it's a little it's too popular. Too popular. I, I really like it though. Yeah, there, but there's never been a point where I'm like, time to watch Finding Nemo. Like I, like yeah. I, it's I'll, like you've seen it a thousand times, but you've never watched it voluntarily. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's one of those things that yeah. they always show you in school when yeah. it's like one of the last days. Or like of on a bus or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah, we're in a plane. We're in a plane. All right, the next one though. Uh, do you have any more ideas on Finding Nemo? Is that, is that all you got? No. 
I'm sorry, Andrew Stanton. I know you worked really hard. I think <laughs> my favorite, Brad Bird. Yeah. The apparently, Incredibles. he was writer and director of yeah. Story Screenplay. Best, I think, the best Pixar movie. It's pretty opinion. great. Yeah, it's. I have nothing wrong with it. It's kind of perfect. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> um, Just like everything from the opening. Yep. Where is my super suit? Oh, you yeah, know, it's everything is great about it. Yeah, no, that no, the whole opening of the fifties like interviews. Yeah, it's oh, great. So good. Which Jeez. is so similar to the opening of Up, which is the other film he did. That's true. Yeah, he wait, he did Up too. Yeah, yeah. No, he didn't. Well. Oh, he... Pete Docter did Up. Wait, he didn't do Up? No. Brad Bird did, wrote Ratatouille. Oh, that's so weird. For some reason, I thought he did Up. Oh. That's strange. The wiki never lies. The wiki never lies. Well, anyway, no, I, I just love the opening, the whole 50s suit. Mm-hmm. I love the 50s aesthetic of everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was very... And, like, I didn't, re- like, I didn't really, like, get it as a kid. That, like... Mm-hmm. This movie is is very adult oriented in terms of oh, its humor at the beginning, especially. It's like a midlife crisis story. Yeah, the way the way they all know each other and they're all friends, they're all hanging out in the in the good old days, mm-hmm. and then when they get older, yeah, it's great. It's so re- it's really well <laughs> it's done. It's so funny. It's like American Beauty, kind of. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, um, <laughs> really I just, like- it's everything to like even even the col- the color grading. Everything changes mm. in the real world. Everything's gray and dark and just. Depressing and just he's huge. Yeah. He doesn't fit in anything. Yeah. It's great. Oh, it's so, so well good. done. Yeah, it's so funny. It's yeah. It's just like, and it's like really well balanced. It's got great pacing. I think I the, have to watch the Incredibles. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. good. I'm, I'm very Excuse excited for the sequel. I hope they don't ruin it. Yeah. It's apparently only takes a few months after it takes place. A few months after the original. It's not going to be yeah. like adult. Um, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I'm hype. I'm hype. Um, no, everything about it, like... <laughs> nothing bad to say at all. No, I have nothing bad to say about it. I just love every scene. Um, oh, crap, I forgot. That, that, that dash running scene mm. is, like... Oh, yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Everything about it. The music is so good. Every, like, the visuals are... Who's the composer for that? Uh, it, sounds, it sounds like some... I don't want to say Michael Giacchino. Michael Giacchino. Is it Michael Giacchino? Michael is that real? Is Michael Giacchino. Holy shit. It's his first Pixar movie. That's so it went funny. from Randy Newman to Thomas Newman, who's his brother, son, brother, and then Michael Giacchino was like, Psh, "I got this right off the Halo train." Oh no, he didn't do <laughs> right it. Off the Halo he didn't do Halo. He did. Um, I think he did. Lo- he did music for Lost. Mm-hmm. I think he did music for a couple of video games. Like I know he definitely did it for Cloverfield in two in two thousand eight. Um, I'm trying to think of what other. Yeah, no, he did the Star Trek movies. Before this, though, I'm talking about like before. Uh, yep, Jurassic World, uh, Lost World, Med- yeah, the Medal of Honor games, uh, Mercenaries games, all that stuff. That's kind of like where he started. And then he wrote this. Some of the best music, the jazz, like yeah, just every aspect yeah. of this movie is just really good. It's all really right, good. we can move on because we'll, we can just talk about. It. So yeah. the original Cars movie. I never saw Cars. You never saw Cars. I joke about it all the time, but I've never seen it. I think the first Cars is not bad. It's, it's pretty. Right. It's pretty. It's fun. It's well, cute. It's, it's just funny because where I lived in like Southern California, I just noticed in every store, a pro, not even when the movie came out, just for years afterwards, mm-hmm. proliferation of specifically cars merchandise. Like, oh, they like, destroyed the market. Unbelievable. It's crazy. I'm like, it's not even the best Pixar film. No, I mean, it's I have not at all. <laughs> all like, right, I honestly, Connor, you should watch Cars. Should watch it's it. really short. It's not that bad. It's it's Cars cute. Two. It has a good moment at the end. What about Cars 2 or Cars 3? Cars 2 is horrible. We'll get there, though. Um, eventually, we'll get there. I don't know if we'll go through all these, but Cars is pretty good. It has some good, it's really good music. Um, visuals are nice. It's got a good story. It's not... So are there humans in this mindless. world? No. Okay, there's no humans. Yeah. It's just Cars. Okay, that's so strange. And do they eat food? Gasoline? They drink gasoline. Wow. How do they sit? Have you ever seen a Cars movie? No. Like, no. do they sit in chairs or? No, they just have... park. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. Do they have buildings? Yeah. <laughs> but who goes inside the buildings? Cars do. <laughs> Everything is a garage door. <laughs> Everything's a garage door. Yeah. Okay. They use their windshield wipers to hold things. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, like. Like little things. <laughs> like hands? Like, yeah. Are they like, opposable? Like if they have a flag in their hands, it's held by their windshield wipers. Oh, right. Or their sure. mirrors or whatever. It's very strange. It's, really um, but it's like a dinosaur. <laughs> honestly, I think you should watch the first cards just, just to see it because it's it's pretty good. Ratat- Ratatouille's next. This is John Lasseter. This is Brad Bird again. 
He directed and he and he wrote it. Red Bird. Ratatouille is one of my favorite movies of all time. Really? Yeah. Ratatouille wow. is perfect. I like Ratatouille. I don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's oh, the best. It's so but. good. It's so good. It's like... Yeah. It's... I, I mean, there's no bad part to it for me. And it's... You know what's so funny? Is I went to go see it, and I was like, okay, Ratatouille. Like, I wasn't... You know, I was kind of... By the time it came out, I was kind of aging out of the whole Pixar hype yeah. thing. 2007. Um, yeah. So I was, like, in, in high school at that point. And so I was, like, just kind of, like... You know, I wasn't as into it as I had been before. Yeah. And then I, I went to go see it just, like, randomly on a lark, and I watched it, and I was like, that's one of the best movies I've ever seen. <laughs> that was great. Like, it just, it was so, all the stuff with, like, Chef Cousteau, and, like, Anyone Can Cook, and, like, all the stuff. So you didn't the, think that the hair pulling thing was a little far-fetched? I always thought that was kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. Oh, the hair pulling? Yeah. Um, it didn't make sense at first, but then I was like, mm, that's fine. I, I Like, like yeah. the movie was so yeah. good that I didn't mind it. And the best part... Well, not even the best part about that, but it's like I had a cat um, named Sal like a couple years back, and he had this thing where if you scratched his spine, he would like lick the air. <laughs> so I'm like not entirely crazy that that's a possible. Yeah, thing. I guess so. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> sure. No, I do. I do like that. I like the whole mob thing about the aspect of it. Mm. Oh yeah, I I love the whole thing with the food critic, like. Like, oh yeah, the food yeah, critic's great. Who, who who gave him a star off, and then he comes back to go have the ratatouille. And it's, it's ratatouille like, is actually pretty good. Not yeah. like the movie, like the food. Ratatouille is pretty. Good. I've I don't think I've had ratatouille. Yeah, ratatouille is good. It's cooked right. Yeah, it's, it's like pretty, vegetables. It's vegetables right? and sauce basically, yeah. but it can be cooked really well. Yeah. Uh, Wally. People don't like Wally. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan. I like Wally. I th- I thought it was a little too. A little too on the nose type thing. A little too on the nose. A little too silly. The metaphor was not. So I liked much. the character of Wally. Right. That's I mean that that's he's the best part of the movie just seeing him go through things. I like. It was that. weird to see that actor. Oh, the real guy. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever his name was. Like, yeah. And yeah. It was kind of weird. This guy. Kind of silly. <laughs> I yeah. When I watched it, I was like, this is really strange. The guy from Waiting for Godot. Waiting for your Guffman. <laughs> Waiting for Guffman. <laughs> Waiting for Godot. Yeah. Whatever. You're not wrong. I mean, it's, it is Waiting for Godot. <laughs> yeah, it is Waiting for Godot. <laughs> Waiting for Guffman. Yeah, that actor. Yeah, Wally's fine. I mean. I think Fine. he was a cute character. and Andrew Stanton. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Going back to Pete Doctor. Pete Doctor. Up. Up is one of my favorites. Up was really good. Up is fantastic, over. yeah. Everyone loves the opening. Everyone loves oh, the opening. Oh, the opening, yeah. opening is terrif- Just, oh, God, it's horrible. It's so good. That's good, yeah. But it's like, it destroys you. Yeah, yeah. and no, I love it. Uh, the music in that's great. The visuals are great. The story's great. I love it. Yeah, it's good. I don't think I hopped on the up hype train as much as other people did, but I definitely recognize it. Yeah, I, I remember that was. I remember that's one of the first Pixar movies I remember being excited for, not as a kid but as an adult. Because mm. it was two thousand nine, I was in high school, and I was like, "Well, I'm pumped about." I'm this. noticing the pattern with like the movies I like is like, to- like Toy Story two, um, Ratatouille. Incredibles, like all the big ones. I think the way I like all those ones is there's a very strong genre and visual aesthetic. Yeah. Whereas Up, I don't know if I could tell you what genre Up is. Like, oh, God, it's like an adventure something. Yeah. yeah. It's like adventure film. Indiana Jones, maybe? No. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> talking Dogs. Talking Dogs. Indiana. Oh, the Talking Dogs stuff is great. Yeah. That's I, super cute. No, I love, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, the little kid's the best. Uh I like little, how the main evil dog has the little the voice, voice changer. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. That's a wonderful. That's uh, that's the one of the things that it's like taking the reality of what you've established and using it as a membrane to see how characters react to things. Yeah, that's super fun. Yeah, that's like a really, really good. Um, I don't. There's not much to say about up because I just really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I good. loved it when it came out. I still love it. I feel like I watched it on TV a few weeks ago, and I was like, this movie's fantastic. <laughs> Holds up. It's on TV. Um, Toy Story 3, mm-hmm. I liked it when I saw it. But now that I, when I go back and think about it, it, it was good, but it's just kind of like a little not very not very memorable. Mm-hmm. You know? What do you, what do you think about it? I, I, thought, I thought it was good. Again, I mean, for me, it had it, been a long time since Toy Story 2. And I just don't think I was totally invested in the franchise. I mean, I know a lot of people at the time were like, oh, my God, it's so sad. I'm crying because I'm, you know, it's like... Reminiscing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, it's my so funny. My mom balled her eyes out. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's definitely some... I don't think I remember being sad. I just remembered being like, okay, yeah, I, it was good. I mean, I, <laughs> but it, I, I didn't... It didn't leave a strong impression. Yeah. Except for the... The ending. The, yeah, the ending. And the metaphor of the, the you know, um, Lotso and all that Well, Lotso was basically just the guy from the second one. Yeah, yeah. It was just a rehash. So you just kind of like... <laughs> it so it just didn't feel as well thought out. I didn't really like the new toys that much. I liked oh, yeah. Ken. There's Ken was weird... funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's yeah good. Ken was a good idea. But I don't know. It's just... Meh. I didn't like Spanish buzz. Oh, yeah. Because they did that in the much. second one with the the buzz, other buzz. It's just like... It's it's weird. I don't know. Um, the trash compactor scene. Do you think that was overdone? It was... A little, yeah, slightly. I think. Yeah. It was too... They were like, we're going to die. Like, that's like really heavy stuff. Yeah. I was like, ay. <laughs> <laughs> it seems kind of weird. Um, yeah. After that was... And cr- they never resolved the issue of the film, I think. Right? Because the issue was that what what happens to toys that are no longer wanted anymore? Right. Like... They got lucky that they found another home. Yeah. What happens when she grows up? Same exact thing's gonna happen. Yeah, they're it's gonna like, have to figure it out. They did not, they did not transform. They did not grow in any conceivable way. They just do toys just live forever if they're taken care of. I guess that's horrifying. Like Woody's been around since like the fifties, apparently. He's <laughs> been alive for that long, and he only seems to remember one. <laughs> you know, like I, it's weird. I don't. All right, we're getting way too. <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take out your glasses. Oh man. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Anything else on Toy Story 3? Not really. It's, it's uh, yeah. I, I have a lot to say about Cars 2. You ready? Yeah. All right. Cars 2 is after Toy Story 3? Yeah. I feel like I've been making fun of Cars 2 for years. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I've been making fun of it since, like, 2011. 2007. It came out in 2011. Jesus. Cars 2. That's insane. I hate that movie. <laughs> You hate that movie. That's all I have to say. You want to move on? Well, you know, I want to know why. <laughs> oh God, no! I don't want to talk about it. It's so bad. It's like they for. It's like I don't know what happened. Is it the same person? Yeah. John Lasseter, Ben John Queen, John Lasseter. Yeah. It's like they've, they've compl- they completely didn't cat- understand what made the first one actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like Lightning McQueen's not even in it. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. He's so the the premise of the movie is Lightning McQueen's doing like a worldwide race where he goes all around the world and does a bunch of races. Okay. Who's watching these races? Other cars? Yeah. It's <sighs> weird. So weird. Well, I mean, we watch people run. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like with humans it makes sense because you're like, ooh, I wonder if they can do it. But cars, it's like you know how fast a car can go. Yeah, I guess so. It's like eighty miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> 150 you know whatever this, this guy um, have gas this guy don't have gas so Mater Mater somehow gets everybody's least favorite character from the first one gets somehow mixed up in like a spy world mm. where he like they think he's a spy but he's not and so they give him all these gadgets and he has to like take down like an organization that's like trying to thwart the races and he's I like there's like flying cars and like submarine cars and rockets and, and it's like James Bond they tried to make James Bond I have to assume this all happens out of doors because <laughs> I can't, I don't understand the idea of that, them being in, in buildings other than parking garages or garages. <laughs> I, it's like, here, step into my office. <laughs> desk, giant desk, road to the office, inside the office. You need to see cars. It's a giant warehouse. All these answers will be, <laughs> all these questions will be answered if you actually just see one Cars movie. It's too horrifying. To so I don't want to say much more about Cars. I want to talk about Brave because Brave is up next. Okay, Brave. People hate Brave. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I did. You I, don't, see it? I did see it. I don't remember it at all. Um, and I think I remember. It's I was, about the girl with the red hair, and she shoots bows. She's like, she goes, "Mama, that's my bull." I got, I got. Is I got Gerard Butler do. in that movie? Do. <laughs> we go to watch out for the comets. I, <laughs> I feel like Gerard Butler's in this movie. It's a bit of rain from space. <laughs> rain from space. The rain in space. Craig Ferguson's oh. in it. Craig Ferguson. I love Craig Ferguson. Uh, <laughs> Billy Conley. Billy Conley. I know. <laughs> Billy Conley. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I know about Billy Conley, Conley is when he was in the reptile room. <laughs> hey, there he is. Welcome to the reptile room. He always looks so uncomfortable, <laughs> doesn't he? Um, I liked this movie. I, I think it was pretty good. I, I understand it was kind of Is like, there magic in it? Yeah. Okay. Her mom turns into a bear. 
Oh, I see. And she has to figure because the witch turns into a bird. I think people hate on it so much. I don't know why. It's it's not that bad. I think it's What's fun. her name? It's like Mer- Merida. Merida, yeah. Merida. Mer- Merida. It fits in really. It fits in really well with all the other Disney princess movies. And I think oh, if it it, if it was just a Disney princess movie and not a Bra- and not a Pixar movie, people would people like would it. Like it. But because it was Pixar, they were like, "What is this? What is this? What is- I wanted a boy. <laughs> I, wanted a- <laughs> I wanted that dude princess. I wanted that dude princess." <laughs> um, so Brave came out. I mean, if, if you don't remember, there's not much to say on that either. Brave. Um, they had to create an entire new engine just to create There's like hair. fog in the movie, right? Fog, a lot of fog. There's some fog and some grass. <laughs> some fog and some grass. A couple of rocks. She shot bows and arrows. I like bears. They're like my favorite animals. So that was cool seeing bears. Bears your favorite animal? I love bears, dude. Bears are do you sweet. Miss, do you like the flag, California state flag? <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite flag. That's my favorite flag. <laughs> that's my favorite flag. That's my favorite flag. Would you, like, how do you feel about shit like The Revenant? Like, <laughs> like, Leland. it's a pretty badass scene. Pretty badass scene. It's fine. I don't care if they get bear. killed. Bears get killed. It's fine. Whatever. You're pro bear. I'm more pure human than I am bear. So oh, if okay. I'm human and surviving, if they kill How bears. How do you feel about Winnie the Pooh and shit? I like, love Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I have a toy somewhere. Where is he? He's underneath all those clothes. I have, t- have you seen bears, like, in the wild? Or no, not even in the wild. I've seen a black like a bear before. Oh, and a grizzly cool. at a zoo, yeah. No, I love bears. I just think they're really cool. I would love to have like a grizzly bear, that's but like well trained and like ride it around and stuff. Anyway, yeah, that's that's fun. a completely different thing. Monsters University came out after that. I didn't like it. Monsters University. Monsters University. That's the one I didn't see. Yeah, I didn't. I have it on Blu ray. Do you want it? <laughs> Do you, oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Monsters University could have been so much better. Right. But it wasn't. Yeah, I heard mixed things about it. I feel, I feel like they tried to do the Toy Story 3 thing, right? Because they're like, how old were people that saw this movie when this movie came out? Now they're college age. Now they're college age. Yeah, so exactly. let's do that story. Yeah. And I think I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but this it, is it a missed, good story, though. <laughs> I definitely think it missed the mark. There's no really memorable scenes. Is Randall in it all? Yeah, barely, though. Barely. And he's not evil in this. He's, like, nerdy with glasses. There were, Actually, okay, so I'm going to spoil something for you. Can I spoil something okay, for you? Yeah, yeah. There is one scene where, like, <clears throat> he takes off his glasses. They're like, you're... They keep making fun of him because he's wearing, like, really big circular Harry Potter glasses. And they're like, you're such a nerd. You wear those glasses. And so he takes them off because he's like, ah, I don't want to be a nerd. And then he does that squint. <laughs> and that's why he squints. He's like, I can't see anything. So he's always squinting. And that explains, like, why he's always squinting. Because he needs glasses. That's great. <laughs> that was that's, pretty. That's fun. I really like that part. <laughs> um, but I feel like that's the point of the movie. Is it just explains stuff where the, how they got there? Yeah. Which I guess is any prequel. Which I think is the problem I have with prequels, where it's like, remember this? Remember this thing? Oh, that's how we got that jacket. <laughs> you remember this? Yeah. The prequels to Harry Potter. How Voldemort? How to how to how to Voldemort? It's better not knowing. I Get like all his magic. I like it when they when so when they. It. I like it when a world makes references to things that you've never seen. Oh yeah, it yeah. makes it feel so much bigger. A little bit of mystery. Star Wars does that. Lord of the Rings does that. Mm-hmm. Talks about like the the first age. Yeah, then you got to just because we haven't seen it. I don't need to see it. I like that it's there. You can watch it on HBO. And then if you like, <laughs> like stage. it's like it's like the Lord of the Rings when they when they refer when Bilbo refers to the Hobbit. Mm-hmm. You know what happens. You know what happened. You don't need to see it. Now seeing it when they refer to it in the movie, I think of the Hobbit movies, and I don't want to because I hate those right. movies. Yeah, yeah. It's better not. It's better just like imagining it yourself. The best Hobbit reference ever was in the first Lord of the Rings when they fight the dragon. Yeah. He's like, there hasn't been a dragon here. That was was awesome. So did you see Inside Out? I want to watch Lord of the Rings. I always want to watch Lord of the Rings. It's so good. Uh, Inside Out. I think Inside Out wasn't as good as everybody says it was. Inside Out either. Everyone was crazy about it. You should see it. You should see it. I just don't think it was as good. I just know the imaginary friend dies. Spoilers for Inside Out. (laughs) Friend dies. (laughs) I know the most important spoiler. Um, I thought Inside Out was... Fine. Does this girl have bipolar syndrome or something? It, it kind of, yeah. BPD. <laughs> is that what BPD is? <laughs> I don't know. Bipolar <laughs> disorder. I thought it said Joan, Joan, Joan Rivers wrote this. Joan Rivers. Oh. oh. Jonas Riviera. Jonas. Oh, wait. Did she write this? Jonas. Oh, producer. There was somebody, Meg Lefebvre. Oh no, Meg Lefevre for the that's yeah yeah, yeah. Meg Lefevre is actually doing some Marvel shit right I think she's is it Lefevre or Lefla it's French oh, yeah. so it Le could Le be Lefevre 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 <laughs> what, what's the French thing I always always like to say Le uh, 
I like to say bogey. Au revoir, Shoshana. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> I love that movie. No, uh, the, the the mime from Incredibles. It's the mime from Incredibles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Uh, his name? Bon Voyage. Bon Voyage. <laughs> yeah, great, great character. Anyway, um, Inside Out was. I liked it, but at also like I was watching it and everybody was falling in love with it. And I was I remember sitting in the theater thinking like at the end I was like yeah I like that, but like I don't think it was that good. Right. <laughs> like I was I like I looked that. around like thinking like what did I miss? Why is everybody like completely obsessed with this? Definitely, definitely. And I, I mean it was fine. Yeah, it, that's always a weird feeling because you're like why did I not connect? With this and then I started level? thinking because you know Inside Out, Monster University. And I like I liked Brave, but even Brave and Cars Two I hated, and Cars Two Three was like meh. I was like, am I like growing out of the Pixar mm, phase? Maybe, maybe you know what I mean. And then even even now, Good Dinosaur comes out after that. Good Dinosaur looked beautiful, but there was no substance to it. No it was cute, but it was. I didn't even know it was Pixar. I, I thought it was like yeah, it came out of DreamWorks or something. Yeah, shit. who knew about it? Came out of nowhere. Came out the no, twenty sixteen actually. It, no, yeah, it came out in 2015. Two Pixar movies in one year. Wow. Inside Out and then Good Dinosaur. So Finding Dory. Finding Dory. I did see Finding Dory. You did see Finding Dory. I liked it. Uh, I didn't like it very much. There, It wasn't very good, but there was stuff in it that I loved. I loved the octopus character. I loved the uh, Always Sunny cameo. Who was um, that? That was uh, D. And, oh, and, yeah, she played the whale. And I think the her... Brother Dennis is in it too, I think. I think he plays the other dolphin or something. No, that's um the guy from Modern Family. Oh really? Oh okay. The beluga? I thought yeah, I thought it was, thought it was Dennis. No. <laughs> you haven't thought of the smell, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love Dennis so much. I know he's so good. Um I didn't like this movie very much. Yeah, it's not it's not very good. Um there's elements to the structure that I enjoyed. I like the Octopus character. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, no, the ending was crazy. boring. Yeah. I didn't care about her finding it. I thought it was just stupid. I think I, I would rather watch this movie than Finding Nemo. Really? Yeah. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I don't like it. I, I can't think of any moment in that movie that I was like, that's a good moment. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I can't either, but I just I feel the same way about for the first Finding Nemo. <laughs> really? You don't like the sharks? Maybe, I, okay, I like the sharks, I like the turtles. But that's, yeah, uh, I like the pelican, he's a great character. Oh, I forgot about the pelican. The pelican who goes and talks yeah. to the fish tank. He's giving them all the news. Oh, okay. And the, yeah. and the turtles. Well, I think I just thought the fish tank was too horrifying. The yeah, like, fish tank's pretty... God, uh, Willem Dafoe's in that movie. Yeah, I like Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe's great in that movie. Anyway, Willem Dafoe's gonna... also in Death Note. So it's like, <laughs> Willem Dafoe does not Willem save Dafoe's the best part of Death Note. He's the best part of Death Note. Yeah, he's pretty good in that movie. And it's so funny, he's in, uh... What's that movie? Murder on the Orient Express. Is he in that? Yeah, he's going to be in it. He's, is he the murderer? I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> he's always cast as bad guys. He's in... He's the one of the bad guys in the Wes Anderson movie Grand Budapest. Oh, the Grand Budapest. He's great. Which is the yeah. one I did not like. You didn't like Grand Budapest? I didn't like It's my Grand favorite. Budapest. one of my favorite ones. That's your favorite one? No, one of my favorites. Next yeah. to the, thought, life, the Life of I thought Clark. it was too weird. I thought it was too... Well, not even weird. I thought it was too dark. It's really? Grim. Oh, that's such a... All right, we'll have this conversation later, because, like, that's... <laughs> all right, so Finding Dory was bland. Mm-hmm. Cars 3 was also very bland. It was better than Cars 2, not as good as Cars 1, and it just didn't go anywhere. Nothing really happened. I'm going to watch all three Cars movies and all the Fast and Furious movies in one setting. You should watch all the Cars movies. Not all sick. at once, but you should watch them, just for the heck of it. <laughs> um, and then the next one to come out is Coco, which... I was doing my research for our news segments, and I saw an article that said Coco is getting the some of the best reviews of Disney Pixar movies had since Inside Out. That's good. I'm excited. What is the director synopsis plot? Uh, it's about a kid in Mexico. It's like Mexican whatever. Oh, it's the like Day of the Dead, and he it's gets like psychonauts. And so the Day of the Dead is when it's like, like at psychonauts level, <laughs> when you send like your loved ones and they like pass to the realm of the dead. Mm-hmm. And so he gets stuck in the realm of the dead by accident, and he has to get back. It's a little bit of corpse bride, a little bit of corpse bride action. Yeah, a little bit of corpse bride. Better, but it's with his. It's like his like ancestors. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, that's like some Mulan shit right there too. Remember, remember when she puts the the 
hallucinogen to the graveyard and everyone smokes. It wasn't hallucinogen. It was made sense. <laughs> I don't recognize any of the actors because they're all, um, like, Latino. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, because know. people would have freaked out if they put anybody that wasn't. Yeah, you can't whitewash these actors. Can't wait, no, can't you can't whitewash these, these Although voice I say, actors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, I, I do like the casting of Idris Elba as Heimdall. I do like that casting. Oh, he's great. He's really good. Why are you bringing that up? Oh, well, because people say that they made that argument for the other thing, too. Of like, why isn't Heimdall white? But it's like, he did a good job. <laughs> he did an okay job. Yeah, he's fine. He's great. All right, so that's all we got for Pixar. Do you want to do uh, some opinions from the future real quick? Opinions from the future. <laughs> opinions from the future. It's weird. Whenever you say the news or opinions from the future, I just want to do... You want to do it yourself? I'll let you... you can no, I don't it. want to do it myself. I want to hear it. And so what my brain does is my brain says it because I want to hear it. Because <laughs> I, I love the way you do it so much that I'm just like... I want it for myself. Not really me. It's just a bunch of effects on my voice. That's. It sounds like no effects. It sounds like you're just doing a deep voice. No, it's all effects. I can't do that. That's crazy. Uh, So the solo movie came out. Do you do a different one every time? Or do you use the same one? Uh, Yeah, I have have them saved. Mm. I don't have to redo them every time. That would be a pain in the butt. They sound different. They sound different each time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, all right. (laughs) Maybe that's like some Rorschach inkblot test shit right there. I don't know what you're talking about. It's different every time. It's different every time. (laughs) Um, All right, so where were we? Oh, yeah. Uh, The Solo movie. Solo. Han Solo Solo movie. Solo. It's Han Solo movie. Yeah. What'd you think? Well, I, I made fun of Ron Howard a lot. But I gotta say, he really surprised me. He really surprised me, and like, it got it got uncomfortable. He yeah. started like doing like, there was this whole part where like he played a character in the movie, and he started turning the camera and like was saying like, please like this movie. Yeah, it's <laughs> please. The cool, like I think the funniest part about that movie for me <laughs> was that like Han Solo wasn't the main character. And oh, like yeah. he barely had any screen time. He was kind of like the background character. I felt tricked. <laughs> it was so, it was weird, but I was okay with it because like everybody was mad that this character was not Harrison Ford. So yeah. they're like, I will just make him a side character. And they, it felt like it was a joke in the movie. <laughs> Whenever he would show up to a place, they'd be like, who are you? <laughs> and, like, and he's like, I'm Han Solo. <laughs> and upset at him because they didn't believe. Like the whole movie felt like he was justifying not only to the characters in the movie, but in a meta way to the audience. Did you think it was weird was when, when that scene where he like presented his idea? It was a picture of Harrison Ford. <laughs> but like modern Harrison, like old Harrison Ford, it was so strange. It was super weird. <laughs> they, were, they were like, it was like super. And they're like, this is you, man. And he's like, no, it was me, man. <laughs> it was so meta. It was yeah, so strange. It was really so weird. Like, it's like they had it. no idea what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> they gave up completely. <laughs> That's what happens, man. That's what happens when you fire a director halfway through. All, all jokes aside, how funny would that be if That'd this be movie just completely, like, <laughs> knowingly so falls apart? <laughs> That would be like to the point where it's like it's like love parody. That. Like you see booms like come into the shot and like <laughs> like sets fall over and things like that. What was that? It was a it's droid. Like there's a scene with a puppet, but you see the guy's arm underneath <laughs> it. You cannot talk to Java. <laughs> your your arm. Break your arm. Like you see the wire on the arm like lifting up and down. Like it's just so bad. <laughs> That would be amazing. I think he's a bounty hunter. <laughs> his gun falls apart. Oh, shit. He's like, re- he's like the script in his hand. He's like reading it as he goes. I'm going to get you. <laughs> what else? All right, what else are we talking about? We talked about... Shazam came out. Shazam. Holy shit. I was scared, man. Was pretty Why good. did they hire a horror movie director for this movie? <laughs> he did a good job. He, it's a Shazam, Shazam's like kids. You know Shazam, right? It's like yeah. kids who have yeah, it who turns come in, into... Uh, right. You know how much I hate body horror. Yeah. Every time he transformed into Shazam, Fuck. it was it's disgusting. Like their bones and skull molding together. His skin would fall like, off. He would bleed. Oh, God. He'd literally be in a pile of his own skin every time he turned it. It was, yeah. It was <laughs> like, brutal. And it was a kid, too. Man. That R rating. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I didn't... I, I couldn't... I, Oof, it was like tusk all over again. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, oh, God. Kevin Smith. And then The Rock. The Rock felt like the hero of the movie. Yeah, I, I was rooting for him. I was like, yeah. please defeat this thing Kill so I don't have to see it anymore. 
<laughs> There's a couple scenes where he was transforming. He was going, help me. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> oh, God. He's <laughs> seeing the hand coming out of his face. <laughs> comes out of his face. Okay. All right. Uh, I can close this one out. Okay. If you want. I'll do oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this episode <laughs> of Invested. Um, this is a long one, but I'll cut it down because it doesn't need to be long. Um, yeah, thanks for, for listening. Tune in next time. We're going to do some spooks. Some spooks Ooh. next time. We'll figure Ooh. something out. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Say goodbye, Connor. Bye, Connor. <laughs>